Welcome back to the That's My Dad podcast. I got my really, I got my brother here today. That's kind of different. Hadn't had any family, so we got. We need to talk, Alberto. First of all, about our relationship because yeah. I know people people wonder because we refer to each other as as brothers. We're not biologically related, but you want to tell the story how we became brothers? Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. So I finished medical school in Colombia, and then and then. Um, uh, I wanted to learn English, and I wanted to see if I could learn my my I had my surgical specialty here, my training in surgery here. So, so I came here to Gaston State Community College with three thousand dollars. That's all I got, and my title. And then uh, I said, "Well, what am I gonna do? Because I I got I got learn English." So, so I st- I went to Gaston State Community College. It was the best program I can find. Uh, we last me six months of t- uh, learning English, and then. Um, and then uh, it was like five hundred dollars a month at that time, tuition, room, and board. So with my with that, I thought, well, maybe after that, maybe I can do some babysitting or who knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> do something to be able to learn. My because in six months it's gonna be hard to learn English, but yeah. other other parts of the country were a thousand dollars a month tuition, room, and board. So I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't do it in three months. I was not gonna learn English, so. I found Gaston State Community College, and they uh, so I uh, they gave me the visa, student visa. I came with that, and then uh, after six months, uh, yeah, the money ran out, and I didn't know what to do. And uh, uh, very gratefully, Nor- uh, uh, Scott's parents and uh, Norris and Maryland uh, they gave me uh, invited me to live with them because my dream was to pass my medical my medical boards and to uh, uh, learn uh, surgery here in the United States. So, so, so I started living with uh, with Marilyn with and Scott parents, with yeah. the Scott's parents in your house, and that was just uh, and they they fed me, they took me to school, they uh, uh, and they helped me every way I could to 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 pass my test. And after a year living with Scott, and they let me move with uh, with the, with Scott's grandparents to. Uh, in Birmingham, which at that time I thought they were old in the seventies, hmm. and then uh, they helped me to go to school too while I was studying for my boards and until I passed my board. So that's how. Yeah. Until until so I lived with Scott's grandparents for a year. So that was a blessing to me until I passed my boards and I'm, I moved on to to school. So that's how we became brothers. Is you know, a lot of people are confused because my wife is Hispanic. And people think that you're related to her somehow, but no, it's. And people ask me all the time, well, how, are, "How are you and Alberto related?" And I usually just tell them that I was adopted because I think my parents <laughs> love you more than they do me. <laughs> no, they don't. I'm kidding, but <laughs> but but yeah, we we have a, a close relationship, and you know, Alberto, a lot of people know you as a doctor, and and you're very well respected in this community, and they don't realize you you. You had to start at the bottom. I mean, you didn't. Everything wasn't handed to you. I remember <laughs> when you first got here. You you were just a kid. And you didn't have any money. You didn't have a car. Uh, you you That's were correct, yeah. basically poor. Yeah. And you you've worked yourself crazy. I remember when you were building ships in a bottle. That's a, correct. A little That's bottle, correct, and yeah. you were practicing your yeah, surgical yeah. skills by. Building those yeah, ships. Yeah, Coca-Cola bottle at that time. That was the first company I built. as a yeah. ship in the bottle company. <laughs> yeah, and you you and Mom used to stay up. She taught you English by talking to you all night long. Ah, I love yeah, your yeah. mother. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah so, she's awesome. so we're we're like brothers, but I just thought we should disclose yeah, that yeah, before that we, we go yeah. any further. So I didn't get to meet your dad. I, I only met him one time when I was in Colombia and yeah. wasn't, wasn't able to spend much time with him, but I know you had a special relationship with your daddy, so uh, tell me about that. Tell me who he was, yeah. and tell me about that relationship. So, so I had a great parent. I was very blessed with fantastic parents. Uh, so my dad was a civil engineer. He was a civil engineer, and uh, and uh, out of seven kids in his family, he was the only one who went to school. And uh, <coughs> but uh, he raised five kids of, of all of us, and. Uh, Everything that my dad died was for the house. Everything was for the house. He, he was a fantastic dad. He was always there. He was always present. He always provided for us. He always teach us. He was tough. He was not easy. He was tough. We were scared of him when we were little. Mm-hmm. But as we grow older, he became my friend. 
Uh, so that was just fantastic. I mean, I just, and I'm thinking back on the, all the times that I spent with my dad, really, uh, he, fishing was his passion. But he always, uh, so so that was a great time that I spent with my dad, just fishing and they count the stories of a hundred count, hundred pound catfish in the Easter Plains of Colombia. We had just uh, beautiful you, you memories. You caught a hundred pound catfish? Oh, yeah, yeah, that wow. was awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was, and that was two or three in one day. Wow. See, so see, so there were five of y'all, right? We were five. That's and, correct. And your dad was a civil engineer, but he still found time to, to take you fishing and to do do all those other That's things. Correct. Yeah. He, yeah. He, uh, he, uh, well, after the age of 50, he had some business with his brothers on real estate. He was able to retire early. And, uh, and then so he, uh, but he still, even before that, he made time for fishing for all of us. So, how did, how, how'd your dad find time with five kids? to delegate his time with each other. No, I think he just made it. I, mean, I don't know how he did it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we were, we were blessed. We had a lot of help, but, uh, but still, my mom was always at home, yeah. and my dad was working, but uh, but he always went out to spend time with uh, with all of us. Yeah. yeah. What kind of things do you think he, what, what values do you think he instilled in you that you've carried on and trying to pass on to your uh, kids he, i mean he was uh i mean you i mean you you, you know you, uh, you whatever you see in that is what you become really that's uh and then uh uh i mean he was a role model he always wore hard he always wore hard he he uh he was not a haggy person but uh but uh, i think he always there and everything was for the house everything he, he purchased and everything was for the house, I'm fishing too. He loved fishing and yeah. tents and camping. He loved that, but yeah. that's a good family thing so to be together. What kind of stuff you, you, you talked about camping and fishing? What, what what do you think it was that he did that really built your family as a unit? That kind of helped you to come together as a because you're still close to your siblings. Yeah, that's correct. That's what, correct. What do you think he did that that sort of helped build that family bond? That those memories that you have that that have held y'all together for all these you years. Know, was, he, you know, I think uh, looking back, I think he always wanted to, uh, we always eat together. I mean, we just, when it's time for dinner, or the, we, when it's dinner time, everybody has to be at the table, you know? Yeah. And uh, and I think it's, uh, uh, we always spend time, especially at the table, that's for sure. See what I mean? Now, he was always there for us. See what I mean? Yeah, so he was so home at night for, for going to be there. Yeah, for he, he he, he didn't like parties or anything like that. I mean, he had friends and he liked music and, uh, but it just everything was at home, you know. Yeah, that's a yeah. theme that we're finding as we do more and more of these interviews. That the the the, the guys who have great relationships with their kids and and quite frankly, I'm the the kids who are grown up to be great kids. The common theme is that dinner time table. Mm -hmm. We did a did, we did an interview with a guy who said that. The one piece of furniture in his house that meant more than anything was the dinner table. And when the kids were all grown and gone, they gave away all their furniture except the dinner table. Wow. You have a you have a very busy schedule. You start your day at four o'clock in the morning with you exercise, then you go into you're in surgery by six o'clock, I think. Nah, it's a little later. Seven thirty, okay. eight o'clock. Seven thirty eight. Do you exercise from four to seven thirty? No, no, no. <laughs> but you're you have no. a busy day and then a lot of times I know you're you're working until six at night or midnight and then you're on yeah. call. How have you found time especially when uh, Lily and Natalie were at home, how did you find time to uh, a way to make time with them? Well, it was hard because uh, when you are on call, it was just it, it was it was really hard to be honest with you because the, the time they were, uh, I mean, what you had to just being on call, you had to be on call, or you had to switch with your partners to be off to for mm -hmm. special, more special dates, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it was hard because sometimes I was still in the hospital and you just couldn't be with them all the time for all the events, but. My wife was wonderful, trying to hey, you gotta be here, don't forget you gotta yeah. be here. Yeah, you have a good wife. This kept you organized she, she, she yeah she is fantastic on be, be sure you don't miss it your kids need, you need to be there for your kids anything in particular was there a, a special moment that you have or a special little event or something that happened that really sticks in your mind about your dad something he did well he uh i know he was always there for me and he was always praying for me and he was uh always wishing the, the best for me and uh 
And the one thing he did really special it was uh, uh, after I finished uh, medical school, and uh, he uh, invited me to go fishing with him, just me and him, to uh, the Pacific Ocean. And uh, it was and that was a complete a one week completely. We had to get a flight uh, from Bogota to Medellin, Medellin to the coast to Bahia Solano, and then we had to get an hour on a boat on the on the ocean to get to this place that uh, from a fishing club, and we spent a whole week there with him. Just, so just fishing, one on deep one. Deep sea fishing, deep sea fishing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was very special because that is like, very expensive. I know that's very expensive, but he, I know, yeah, I know it was, you know, it was not cheap on him. Yeah, but uh, uh, but so that was that was to me really is just the very very important that I spent that just me and him on that trip. Yeah, and you carried that on. I remember when uh, I think it was Natalie, you and Natalie went on a camping JH ranch. Yeah, J H ranch. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, so you've carried on. Tell tell me some things you've done with your girls that have been special like that through the years. I I know you went to J H ranch and. Spent that week, but you d- you've done some other things with them. Can you think of anything in um, particular that you've done? Let me think. With my, um, uh, uh, we've been to Colombia several times. Yeah, because so your your family. We've been to Colombia with them and the trips to Colombia. And I took into the Easter plane. So, so when my dad died, we went to. Uh, he wanted his ashes thrown into the river. Oh yeah, and, uh, and so I took my kids there. That was. Uh, that was really special for them to be able to go with me and, uh, and my mother and other friends that went all with us and we spent a week there and they started playing. So that was fantastic. It has some memories and some stories, but one of the funny stories is, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I tell it or no. <laughs> uh, we, can, we can edit out anything that's, you, that's not appropriate. Can you just go ahead and tell her? Now listen, I know this guy. So there's no telling what he's about to say, but go, go so for the it. Funny, the funny story with that is that, uh, you know, we were here in the middle of the river. This is the the Manacasillas River with the Meta River. This is a big river, like Cuba, but like a Cusa River, the size of it, but it's real current. So with this real current, a lot of wind, and this is it's like a springtime. It's like 80 degrees all the time there. And then uh, we start, uh, it were several boats, uh, aluminum boats in the middle of the of the, of the river, and uh, we started throwing the, the ashes in the, uh, throwing the ashes in the, in the, uh, in the river, the wind hit it and he hit that in the face. <laughs> Your dad hit her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I, I guess everybody thinks you're this doctor that just operates all the time, but you've got a really uh, funny personality. You're a, you're a lot of fun to be with, and you like to laugh and tell jokes and make jokes. and uh, Those are the kind of things that, I think give our children a sense of security and knowing that their dad's okay, you know, and he can, and dad knows how to have fun. He's not all serious and yeah. he's got a job. He's, it's a very serious job, but, yeah. but they know that you can, you can still have fun. And there's one thing about the extra rear house. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. And plus we need to be good role models to them. See what I mean? So we're trying to, trying to be the best we can, you know, it's just, well, you know, one of the things I know about you that I admire is you don't take yourself too seriously. Mm. You know, <laughs> some people take themselves too seriously. They think, you know, they think, well, I'm successful, I'm respected, I'm, you know, I'm in, looked at in the community. But you're, you're just, you're just the same old guy that I knew, you know, thirty years ago. Now, I guess when yeah, yeah. you moved into my room yeah. while I was going to college. Yeah. But so I'm very thankful. I think just uh, my my mother was uh, fantastic, and to, to remind me because every time I complain about something, my mother used to say, "Be thankful for what for what you got. Be thankful for what you got." And I never forget that. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every time that you and I have ever prayed together, you've started by saying, "Thank you." You're a very thankful and humble person and i think the, w- the world needs to hear that I, I i don't recall one time that alberto has prayed and we've as families and and and, and life groups together we've prayed together a lot and every time you started by saying thankful and i think that's a trait that we as dads need to to let our children learn that's tell funny. tell me alberto wh- what do you think it takes to be a great dad. You're a great dad. Your kids are going to say that. But what, oh, what do you think? Sweet. What do you think it takes? Well, it's just um, several things. I mean, you have to 
to provide for them. Be sure you provide for them. Uh, presence, I really present. Be be, be present uh, in the presence of them. That be sure that you know they are there. Uh, it takes affection. I love to hug my kids. I love my Natalia and Malelia. I love hugging in them. Uh, and uh, and uh, I will let them to grow and be a teacher to them too. You know, just t- we need we need to teach our kids just what's right from wrong, and uh, and uh, commitment. I mean, the commitment to be a, a good dad to them. Uh, consistency is really important, you know, to be consistent with everything. Uh, always to be a great dad, I think, is to always stand out by your by your mom, you know. Be sure you respect the other parent, too. That you should, uh, mm-hmm. in front of them, uh, the respect that to the other parent. I think that's important. Um, and I think those are the good qualities, that's good. too. That's good. Have, to you made a it, have you made any mistakes as a dad? Of course, what, of course. Cool. What, what kind of things do you think you've that you've done that you you do different if you had known better? Uh, something I had done is like uh, not listening. Sometimes I don't listen. Sometimes I, I know I've been on a trip with with my Lily in the car, and instead of uh, uh, trying to get a conversation with her, I I start calling my friends and be on the phone with my friends, mm. and I just uh, and I just realized that later. So I just break my heart because I. I, I I lost a moment that I could have some good quality time with my Lily, and uh, and to connect with her better, and that's just that's just something I I, I wish uh, when I with my Lily I can spend some more quality time. So we get preoccupied with our lives and we forget that they have a life too, and they need exactly. our they need our undivided attention. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. I think we're yeah. I think we're all guilty of that. that. Yeah. If you could sum it up in in one sentence. Uh, this this is how this is what it takes to be a great dad. What do you think you could put it in one sentence? What what would be the top thing that you would say? Um, just love them. Just love love. Just love your kids and ask God for <laughs> for wisdom. Alberto, it's so ironic that you say that. Let, let me let me take you back to this very room. Uh, I don't know, ten weeks ago. I sat here with with my dad, and I asked him the exact same question that I just asked you, and he gave me the exact same answer. But I verbatim, verbatim, and that just love your kids, just love your kids. So, Alberto, we, you know, I'm I'm going to give you a chance to say to say something. Uh, you had the good fortune of having really. You, you've got your dad; he's passed now. But you kind of had a second dad. You had your father-in-law, who, mm-hmm. who has passed now. Yeah. And then you had kind of the third dad was who's my mo- my mom and dad took you in. And that's correct. So I, I want to give you an opportunity to, uh, and I have a reason for doing this. It's not just so we can take time, but I, I want to give you an opportunity first of all to. Um, say something as if your dad were here. If your dad were here, what would you say to him? Ooh. <laughs> wow. Dad, thank you for everything. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you for your, for your love, your patience, your kindness, for always taking care of my mother and loving my mother. Thank you for all you did for all our children. I will miss you, Dad. We really miss you. I really miss my dad. I miss talking to him. He was a great dad to me. Yep. You kind of had the good fortune of having Kathy's dad, your I father-in-law. Who he was awesome. He was passed on, too. What, what would you say to Mr. Wallace if he oh. were here? You, you had raised a wonderful daughter. Raise a wonderful family. You're a great role model. You you're fantastic. I wish we had spent more time together. I wish you could be here with us to see our kids to grow with them and see them grow longer. Thank you for everything for you did for the time we spent together. And finally, <clears throat> you know, I have the privilege of calling myself your brother because my mom and dad feel like you're their son and I want to give you the opportunity 
to to speak to 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 our mom and dad. And you can just look in that camera right there. Yeah. Is there something you'd like to say to them? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Marilyn uh, Norris, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking taking care of me from the beginning since I came here to Gaston. Thank you for loving me, taking me to school, feed me, and uh, and uh, I really will not be here if it's not because of y'all. So I really love you more than you don't think, you don't, you, don't, you cannot imagine. Uh, my love for y'all is, 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 is deep in my heart, and uh, I'm just so glad I still you have y'all here, and y'all, y'all always been there for me, and always, I know y'all are praying hard for me and my family. And uh, I just love you all today. You're wonderful, and I love you all very much. Roberto, we have a little gift for you that oh. <clears throat> we'd like to share with you. Oh. Hi. I'm so happy to have this opportunity to share about my sweet, wonderful Alberto. You know, God just orchestrated his life to bring him to Gadsden, and forever I will be changed. You know, he just walked into my Sunday school class one, one Sunday morning and he walked straight up to me and kissed me right there. <laughs> and with that, he changed our lives forever. <laughs> you know, we will be married 29 years this May, May 1st. And I'm so grateful to God for bringing him into our lives. But I wanted to share one little story that is so special to me and the girls. Um, one year we were in Bogota, Colombia, and if you're not familiar with that, it's kind of cold. It's like 55 degrees all the time, so people bundle up. We were on the on the way to the mall with his sister, and we stopped at a red light when Alberto looked outside, and, and we all saw a family that was obviously from outside the city, and the dad didn't have shoes on. Alberto immediately took off his shoes he rolled down the window and handed his shoes out, out to this, this um, dad. We were in shock. What are you going to do? We're going to the mall. <laughs> he said, I can get another pair, but he, he needed a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. And that just, you know, it really didn't surprise us, but it did impress us. And from that moment, we knew, you know, before that, that is exemplary <laughs> of Alberto. He does things like that all the time. Mm. And we know that's because God has just put a special heart of love for people in him. I'm so grateful to God <laughs> for Alberto, and I'm so grateful for, for, to Alberto. And I'm so grateful to be calling him, that's my husband. Aww. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> the best thing about my poppy is his personality. He can walk up to any stranger and become their friend, or make them laugh in about five seconds. And that's the best thing about him. We can't take him anywhere because he always has jokes. If we go to a seafood restaurant, he has to ask the waiter or waitress, how do you order a fish taco? Mm -hmm. May I have a fish taco, please? <laughs> it's so funny every time. He always lights up the whole room because he's so nice, so friendly, and always giving out hugs. He is the star of the show. Man, we have so many stories and memories from high school football games screaming goal every time they make a touchdown to medical mission trips in Costa Rica to going to Colombia to see family and understanding the culture. So that would make a big impact on our lives later. And I'm very thankful and blessed that we got to experience that. Man, one time there was a possum in our garage and Poppy shot it with three arrows and it still didn't die. <laughs> We put it outside, and the next morning we were going to take it to the trash, and it was just gone. Completely disappeared. Still a mystery unsolved. But one of the best memories was playing golf with him all the time. Everywhere we traveled, we'd m make plans to go play golf and get better at our game. This one time we went to Panama City Beach to play golf, and <laughs> on the last two holes, this story is so funny, and I found a baby snake on the green. So it was my idea to put the baby snake in the hole to scare the men behind us. Poppy was in on it for, for a few seconds. We get on the golf cart, go to the next hole. Poppy looks at me and goes, we got to turn around and get that snake out of there. We can't do that. We turn around. He Right before those men walk up to the green, Poppy pulls the snake out of the hole. One man jumps back, scared to death. <laughs> 
We get on the golf cart. We call my mom to get there immediately to pick us up. We skipped the next hole. We got in the car and we're like, go, 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 before we get, we didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> and oh my word, that guilt, my dad could never handle if he gave a man a heart attack because of that. <laughs> so it's been an amazing time with Poppy, always making memories. And I'm so thankful for that. He has always gave me an amazing life. He's always supported me in everything I did. He's devoted. He has sacrificed for our family. He has shown me and Lily true love, selfless love, has taught us patience, taught us to be kind to others no matter what. And that made such an impact on my life growing up, watching him, how he treats others. And I couldn't have it any other way. And that's my dad. So I'm Lily Echeverry, daughter to Alberto Echeverry. Um, one of the things I like best about my dad is his laugh. He's so funny and so loud, and I think sometimes I laugh like him, and it makes me laugh even harder thinking about his laugh and how sweet he is to everybody whenever he sees people out in public and he doesn't know them. He still says hello, and that's one thing that I've taken with me to college. Everybody I see, I say hello to, and it served me well, and I've made a lot of friends that way, so thank you for that. Um, one of my favorite stories about Alberto is when we were at the Browns one night, and our family friends, and... He started laughing so hard from a story we were telling that he almost threw up. <laughs> and it's just really funny to think about um, him throwing up like that and things like that. But lately, I've been thinking a lot about um, when we were kids and we would go um, to school and he would drive me and my sister and we would sing Colombian songs and we would say the Lord's Prayer in Spanish. And I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Uh, Father Alberto, I would one thing I would like to thank you for is just showing me an example of what it means to be um a man of Christ and like a father of Christ. And um, I really appreciate it. I think you're one of the greatest people in the world and I would not give you up for anything. So just wanted to say that. I love you. Thanks. Oh, that's sweet. That's precious, man. That's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, brother. Oh, that's so, sweet. so how does, how does it feel oh, now man. that your kids are grown and out of the house to, wow. to have them look up to you like that? Oh, that's awesome, man. I just, that's just, I well, may cry, but I already cry. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic, but that's awesome. I love my kids. They're so awesome. They are. They're so precious. I'm so blessed. So, Alberto, there's a phrase that comes to mind mm. when I think of you because we used to watch a lot of ball games together. Yeah. And your famous phrase was, you can do it. You can do it. That's right. That's you right. You can do it. Yeah. And you, you, Everybody at the school knew that when somebody said, you can do it. You can do it. That yeah. was Alberto Axiveri. That's right. So I think it's fitting that we close our time by maybe you look in the camera again. Okay. And speak to that young man who's out there where you were 35 years ago. Okay. And tell him you can do it. You can become a great father. That's right. You can do it. You can be a great father. You you can uh, you can be a, a role model. You can ask God for the wisdom that you that that you can be the best you can be, and uh, and uh, nothing is impossible without God. With God, nothing is impossible with God, and uh, and that's just every time you have a think or question about it, just remember that you can do it and. We can cross any obstacles that we can, we can have had in the past. We can cross those, those obstacles and be successful at the end. You can do it. You can do it. That's right. You can do it. Thank <laughs> you for being here. This oh, been thank fun. you so much for the privilege. I think we're going to inspire somebody. I think that's the whole purpose: is that young men will be inspired. You can do it. You can do it. Right. So thanks, Alberto. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me conclude this episode of the that's my dad podcast where we're trying to inspire young fathers to become great dads and break cycles of generational fatherlessness be back next week with another great story thanks